gentlemen, a one, a two. Wah, 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 Donald Duck, he's my little pal. Wah, 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 Donald Duck, Daisy is his gal. Wah, 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 Donald Duck in his sailor suit. Wah, 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 Donald Duck, gee, I think he's cute. I like the way he waddles and I like to hear him talk. And when somebody makes him mad, wah, 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 how he can squawk. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Clarence Ducky Nash was born in Watonga, Oklahoma in 1904. This guy's nickname was Ducky? Hmm. Huh. Seems like he was made for this role. Or did he get it from voicing? Sort of a Captain Hook or Scar thing. Were they nicknames or... Meh. He grew up on a farm surrounded by animals, which he imitated for fun. When I was a boy, I had many pets. Uh, some of them rather exotic. My first pet was my billy goat. And uh, I'd, I'd have to feed him on a bottle. And when I'd leave him, he'd cry. <coughs> you know, like that. And I started imitating him. Well, it's, I put my tongue up to the left side of my mouth <coughs> and vibrate. <coughs> <laughs> you know, I got to think, gee whiz, I can say words with that. Clarence performed at school talent shows, getting big applause whenever he recited Mary Had a Little Lamb in his billy goat voice, which I will impersonate now. <clears throat> Maybe I should leave it to the professionals. Eventually, Nash dropped out of school as a teen so he could tour the Midwest as a mandolin player in the Alamo Quintet, and an animal impressionist on the Red Path, Chautauqua, and Lyceum circuit. At the time, Nash felt that vaudeville would last forever, but was given a shock as it died out in the late 1920s. All good things must come to an end, even vaudeville. Nash married his 18-year-old sweetheart, Margie Siemens, in 1930 and moved to San Francisco looking for a normal job, but at the beginning of the Depression, that was not easy. Hence, you know, the name. The Depression. A friend of mine made it possible for me to go on a radio program called The Merrymakers. And I was paid $20 to be on that show. That was a lot of money in the 30s when there was a depression. This led to a job with the Ador Milk Company after they heard him perform. Ador hired Nash as Whistling Clarence, the Ador Birdman, to promote its milk brand. He would drive a miniature open topped milk wagon pulled by a team of miniature horses. He would go to local schoolyards and assemblies to entertain children with his bird calls and animal sounds, and give out treats, like a small tape measure with Ador's name on it. Oh, Ador, America's favorite milk company. A few years later, uh, some friends wrote from San Francisco, we haven't heard you on radio lately. I offered to go on that same program without pay, and that was the night that Walt Disney heard me. Nash's friends had already urged him to audition for the Disney Studios since they had announced they were looking for someone to provide animal sounds for their animated short cartoons. Two days after the radio broadcast, Nash found himself at Disney Studios. So I pulled over to the curb and decided to go in, Nash remembered. I gave the receptionist a circular advertising for my work with the milk company and did some bird imitations. I suggested she give it to somebody who might be interested, and two days later, I got a call from animation director Wilfred Jackson to come in and audition. During his audition, Nash was still wearing his milkman outfit while he performed all his animal sounds, bird calls, and lastly began to recite Mary Had a Little Lamb as his big finish. Which I will, again, impersonate now. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that is hard. Jackson stopped him for a moment, switched on the intercom, which went directly to Walt's office, and then asked Nash to continue. Within moments, Walt rushed into Jackson's office and said excitedly, that's our talking duck. Walt was thinking of doing a cartoon with a girl duck, but it hadn't quite gelled as a story yet. Nash was put on a retainer for a year to keep his job with the milk company. His first actual voice work for Disney was supplying bird sounds in the Mickey Mouse short, The Pet Store, and he kept being tossed similar little bits. Tossed the little scraps? 
just like the animals he was tasked to voice. Dang. Walt's former partner, Ub Iwerks, had left to start his own animation studio and had also heard of Nash's expertise. He asked Nash to come in and audition to do a voice or voices for his new cartoon short in production, The Little Red Hen. Nash phoned to ask Walt's permission, but Walt was unavailable. Ironically, Walt also had a version of the same story, titled The Wise Little Hen, in development, and was planning to have Nash do the voice of the duck. Serendipity, baby! Walt called Nash back roughly a dozen times but couldn't reach him since he was out on the streets doing his job. He finally left a message for Nash not to do anything for the iWorks cartoon. Nash got called into a story meeting for the wise little hen, and after the story meeting, Walt asked Nash to come to his office to talk about revising the retainer agreement so that Nash could still work for Ador while doing voices at Disney. As Nash told animation historian Milt Gray, I told Walt I'd rather work for just one organization. I don't want to work for two people. Okay, we'll start you at the first of the year. Walt, if you don't mind, I'd like to come to work sooner. When I quit my job with this milk company, my wife wasn't very happy about it. There was once in a while I'd see tears in her eyes. What's the matter, honey? It won't last. I mentioned to Walt and Roy both, I want to be with you a long time. On December 2nd, 1933, Nash became Disney's 125th employee, earning the same amount he made at Ador, $35 a week. So, much like a duck, he was getting that bread. Huh? Huh? I'm completely unappreciated in my time. Nash would go on to perform Donald for over 50 years, starting with the aforementioned Wise Little Hen, followed by Orphan's Benefit in 1934, which featured his Mary Had a Little Lamb performance, which, okay, here we go. I will impersonate now. <clears throat> it is just impossible. Donald would even enter the realm of opera. One time I went to one of our very good story men, Ted Sears, and I said, say, Ted, you know, Donald can sing. Well, he first started singing with uh, the Madame Cluck. Uh, they, we both sang an opera in those days. He has all the, uh, I say, attributes of a human being who expresses sorrow, sadness, and a little mischief, a lot of laughter. Yeah, I'm a doctor. A lot of people think they're getting mad, but I don't get mad. Don't get mad. I never get mad. No, you never get mad. That's right. I'm a doctor. You're an actor, and that explains it all. <laughs> yeah, my particular work in recording, uh, I uh, go to the studio, look at a storyboard, and the uh, director will explain to me uh, just how we want to get the right expressions and all that. Then we make several retorting, recordings, <laughs> but uh, sometimes we make it just right. Donald's first solo cartoon was Don Donald in 1937, and by the time World War II started, Donald's success was worldwide. Although he had received eight previous Oscar nominations, his first and only win was for a war propaganda short, Der Führer's Face, in 1943. When you go to uh, I get to look at a picture, too, about Der Führer's Face. That's right. Uh, your Academy Award winning role was... You know, I happen to be in Germany, and I was looking at the symbol on. <laughs> Is this not wonderful? Is not the fewer glorious? Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! What's that you say, Schweinhund? 
Verdammte Esel! Heil! Hitler! Not to love the fool is a great disgrace. So be heil! Heil! Right in the fool's face! This was all great for Donald, but as with many voice artists at the time, Nash's name was not connected to the duck. Walt always felt that the voice was just one of many character elements, and so they actively tried not to publicize any particular vocal artist. It was all right with me that people didn't know who I was, but I was happy when they eventually did find out, Nash stated. In the early days, Walt didn't want us voices to have any publicity. I went along with his wishes, but one time my name got out in the newspapers. Walt and I had a big argument over it, but when I left his office, I wasn't upset. Walt was a very fair man. I ended up with a raise. Donald. He really is one of a kind, I guess. In addition to voicing Donald, Nash also voiced Daisy Duck in her earliest appearances when she was little more than a female version of Donald, as well as Donald's nephew triplets, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. No, not yet. Now, is that tough to do four different voices in? No, well, I can't do them all at once, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but here's one of them, uh, uh, greeting Donald. You boy, you Donald. You boy, you Huey. You're going to be a good boy today. Well, I'll try to. <laughs> He also voiced the Roughhouse statue, Figaro, and the donkeys in Pinocchio, Pete Jr. in the short Bellboy Donald, a bullfrog in Bambi, and vocal sounds for some of the dogs in 101 Dalmatians. Additionally, he provided the meows of Figaro in a handful of shorts and briefly voiced Jiminy Cricket after the death of Cliff Edwards in 1971. He also voiced Mickey Mouse in the 1934 short The Dognapper. Since Walt was traveling around Europe at the time and was unavailable to record his lines for Mickey as a result. In other words, a long way from animal impressions on the farm. Donald's cartoons are shown in dozens of countries and are usually dubbed rather than using subtitles. In the beginning, for foreign releases, Donald's voice was dubbed by Nash into the foreign language. The words were written out phonetically for him, but generally Donald had very little spoken dialogue. I had to learn to quack in Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, German, Dutch, Swedish, and even Chinese, stated Nash. There were, however, foreign language coaches who helped me. I listened through earphones to the English dialogue and I'd match the length and mood of the dialogue in that other language. It was critical to get everything down pat so they never had to reanimate. It had to seem like the language came out smoothly and matched the mouth movements of Donald. Well, uh, we usually have a foreign coach, you know, from those countries. Yeah. And uh, you'd pronounce words. I'd write them out phonetically. Some, though, I have studied, like uh, Spanish. Right. And uh, German, but German is very tough for a duck to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All I can remember now, or Donald can, is... Uh, Auf Wiedersehen. Yeah, Auf Wiedersehen. Ah. <laughs> you want to do a little Spanish, Donald? <laughs> Ducky brought joy to fans by entertaining with a fiberglass Donald Duck ventriloquist doll at school assemblies, hospitals, and orphanages. At one time, Donald and I were appearing back in Texas, and we were in this hospital where there were... Uh, Oh, they brought all these children out in their beds, laying in bed, some of them in chairs and all that. And here was a boy who was crying like everything. The doctor was right down there even before the show was to go on. Taking care of that boy for some reason, he had to do it right now. The boy was in pain. And this fellow that uh, was managing me on a tour, I says, I think I'll take Donald down there and talk to him. Oh, no, I better not do that, get in the doctor's way. And a nurse overheard me. She says, by all means, go down there, and I did. And I took Donald down there, and Donald put his head right in front of that boy's face and said, Shut up! 
And that kid, shut up. And Donald kept talking to him, and that kid completely forgot about the pain. Chicago, Chicago. That's right. Well, I couldn't get work unless I could entertain. I know this for a fact. I do believe this is what the good Lord meant for me to be as a quack. Nash was actively involved in 1984 with the 50th birthday celebration for Donald Duck, touring the country, giving interviews, and appearing at special events. Nash did not let people know he was suffering from leukemia. In what turned out to be his final public appearance, he went back to his hometown of Watonga, Oklahoma, on December 7, 1984, where Governor George Nye declared that day to be Clarence Nash Day throughout the state of Oklahoma. Watonga named a street Clarence Nash Boulevard in his honor. Nash was unfortunately too ill to ride on the City of Glendale Tournament of Roses float on January 1, 1985, which was themed to Donald Duck. He died in 1985 at the age of 80, an absolute Disney legend. In fact, Clarence received his Disney Legend Award in 1993. His tireless work is to be commended, and his timeless performances as Donald Duck are to be applauded. His ability to perform such a difficult voice while also adding personality is nothing short of amazing. Plus, he has a pretty cool theme song, too. Wah, 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 Donald Duck, cocky as can be. Wah, wah, wah. Here's what he taught me. When someone knocks you down, get right up again. Show some blood like Donald Duck. Oh, yeah. I'll take this one. Wah, 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 wah. Hi, Mouseketeers. Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another Dizography. Dizography.